This devotional song is written by Swami Chandrikananda. The meaning is like this. There is a tide with the name of Sharada and Sri Ramakrishna. World is flooded with their holy name. With the proper wind you sail the mast of your life. Boat, you will go across with joy and laughter. Sharudaram Krishna na mirbaan Dikhe chere bhai Sharudaram Krishna na mirbaan Dikhe chere bhai Vishu bhuvan bheshe galu Aha boli hari jai Vishu bhuvan bheshe galu Aha boli hari jai Sharudaram Krishna na mirbaan Dekhe che de bhai Sharudaram Krishna na mirbaan Dekhe che de bhai Vishwabhu vandhe che galu Aha boli hari jai Vishwabhu vandhe che galu Aha boli hari jai Sharudaram Krishna Nami Bhante Ke Che De Bhai Sharudaram Krishna Nami Bhante Ke Che De Bhai Jugir Hava Lang Lo Pale Jibam Todi De Na Khule Jugir Hava Lang Lo Pale Jibam Todi De Na Khule Sharudaram Krishna Bole He Shekhel Chole Jai Sharudaram Krishna Bole He Shekhel Chole Jai Ma 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 Bole Ma Eir Kole Chole Jai Ma 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 Bole Ma Eir Kole Chole Jai Jaiyo Shri Sharudha Bole Maher Kole Chole Jai Jaiyo Shri Ram Krishna Bole Maher Kole Chole Jai Ma 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 Bole Maher Kole Chole Jai Sharudha Ram Krishna Name Mahandhe Ke Chere Bhai Sharudaram Krishna Name Bhante Ke Chere Bhai Vishwabhuvan Bheshe Galu Aha Boli Hari Jai Vishwabhuvan Bheshe Galu Aha Boli Hari Jai Sharudaram Krishna Name Bhante Ke Chere Bhai Sharudaram Krishna Name Bhaan Dekhe Che Devai
I am reading from the book Sri Sharada Devi, the Divine Mother, by Swami Chaitanya Nanda. According to the Hindu scriptures, when God incarnates as an avatar, His Shakti also incarnates with Him as His spiritual consort. Krishna says in the Gita. Whenever there is a decline of dharma, righteousness, and a rise of adharma, unrighteousness, I incarnate myself. In the Chandi, the Divine Mother said, Whenever the demonical powers try to disrupt or destroy this world, I shall incarnate and destroy those enemies of divine beings. Some religions believe only in the fatherhood of God. But Hinduism asserts both the fatherhood and motherhood of God. Brahman is consciousness and devoid of form, so it can manifest as male or female. In the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, it is said that the Creator was not happy because He was alone. He desired a mate. He became the size of a man and wife in close embrace. He divided this body into two. From that division arose husband and wife. This concept is symbolized by the Hindu deity Ardhanari Narishwara, one half of whose body is female and the other half is male. Moreover, this deity has become manifest as Rama and Sita, Krishna and Radha, Buddha and Yashodhara, Chaitanya and Vishnu Priya, and Rama Krishna and Sharada, all divine beings. who have taken human forms Sri Ramakrishna was fully aware of Holy Mother's divinity when he spoke about her to his disciples he said she is Saraswati the goddess of learning she has assumed a human body to impart wisdom to human beings but she has hidden her celestial beauty lest people by looking at her should be foul their minds with sinful thoughts when ridoy was jealous of holy mother and treated her rudely the master cautioned him saying look here you may insult me but don't hurt her feelings if he who dwells in this meaning himself he says you may somehow get by but if he who dwells in her he says no one not even brahma vishnu or shiva will be able to protect you many people are like doubting thomas mentioned in the new testament who even doubted the resurrection of christ even after hearing from other disciples they had seen christ once a devotee from kalma now in bangladesh doubted the divinity of sharada devi or holy mother this uncertainty was tormenting his mind and ruining his spiritual life he once approached swami sharada nanda an attendant of the holy mother the devotee from kalma said swami i believe that sri ramakrishna was an avatar but i don't consider holy mother sharada devi to be the divine mother sharada nanda replied well if you believe that master was god then why do you have such doubts about holy mother the master had samadhi frequently said the devotee but we don't witness that in holy mother moreover she never practiced intense sadhana as the master did then you are not convinced that the master was god sharada nanda said the devotee humbly replied no swami i wholeheartedly believe that master was god sharada nanda responded then you believe that god married the daughter of a poor woman who made her living collecting and selling cow dung patties without saying anything further the devotee bowed down to sharada nanda and said joyfully now my doubt is gone yes now a short period of meditation
morning friends. Today's topic of uh, discussion is uh, Ramakrishna Sarada. So dear names for the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, today it's very auspicious day also. It's called uh, Shodashi Puja or Falaharani Kali Puja. When uh, Sri Ramakrishna worshipped Sarada Devi as the Divine Mother. And on this day also we had a big event of uh, initiation uh, by Swami Swahananda Ji uh, many years ago, about I think 19 years ago. Um, and many about 26 uh, aspirants took initiation here in Vedanta Society of Toronto. On, and it was uh, by chance it was a uh, day of Faraharini Kali Puja. So on this day we got a Sunday and so we thought of uh, something talking and listening about uh, Ramakrishna Sarada. So how, what was the relationship? First was it was a strange that they came together in this world. Sri Ramakrishna was 23 years old and Sarada Devi was 5 years old. The Sri Ramakrishna's parents were searching for his bride but nowhere to be found. Sri Ramakrishna was consumed with divine love and with the, for the vision of uh, Mother Kali and was like a um, very mad person, mad in love uh, for Divine Mother. And um, just to cure that madness, they thought if uh, he, he was given into marriage, all that would subside and he would become a worldly person. That was the plan of his parents. Generally it happens that way. And uh, they searched and searched and nowhere to be found. Then Sri Ramakrishna himself said, the person who knows nothing but Divine Mother says, why are you searching? He didn't, didn't oppose anything about, about the marriage and wedding, nothing. He said, why are you searching here and there? Go and search in Jairambati, where he never had gone. He's going and search in Jairambati. There is one um, Mr. Mukherjee, Ramchandra Mukherjee. His daughter is already earmarked for, for this. So nothing known. She doesn't know there. He has never visited there. Just his, in his uh, spiritual mood, he might have known. And there was a small girl of five years of age. Her name was Sarada. And when they started talking, they agreed to have five-year-old, five-year young girl to get married to a 20-year-old boy. And uh, it was like the wedding was done and there are so many stories that uh, they, had, they are not rich, so they had borrowed uh, some ornaments um, Sri Ramakrishna then had given for uh, little daughter Sarada and uh, they brought and there were ornaments, she was very happy and now people ask, we have to now return that ornament to the person from where it is borrowed she said, no, I will not give she was happy so well, how to get it? you cannot just uh, make it cry and forcibly um, take out from a new um, um, bride so um, what was done was uh, Sri Ramakrishna said, don't worry, I have a way out. So then when uh, Sarada was asleep at night, Sri Ramakrishna no opened and given to the person whose ornaments it were. Morning she wakes up, no ornaments, she started crying. And Sri Ramakrishna said, don't worry, there will be a lot of things. The small girl no, so just consoled. After that, Holy Mother lived in, uh, with her parents for many years. And when she was like 16, 18 years, then she got to know that Sri Ramakrishna had become like a mad, still her madness for mother was, divine mother was not subsided. And she heard that Sri Ramakrishna is mad, people were saying, oh, she got married to a mad person like that, crazy person, what a bad luck and all that. Holy Mother said, no, that can't be. So whenever Sri Ramakrishna came to um, Jairam, Kamar Pupur, Holy Mother used to be brought, she was doing days. But when that came, Holy Mother walked all the way to Dakshineswar from Jairambati, which took many days, few days, it was a long walk uh, for uh, spending many days. Now also it takes four or five hours by car. So um, that Holy Mother came, that was the relationship, how it, it developed, how Sri Ramakrishna knew, all our divine plan. It was not a marriage in the sense that we think of husband and wife. Though they were called husband and wife, but Sri Ramakrishna never saw Holy Mother as his wife. As we, turn, as we see in the common way we find husband and wife relation. Because there was no that relation. Then who was Holy Mother for Sri Ramakrishna? That question Holy Mother herself asked one day. 
she was uh, in Dakshineswar, she was a grown up uh, young lady that time, and she asked uh, Sri Ramakrishna, how do you look upon me? Sri Ramakrishna immediately said, the one who is in the, staying in the temple, the Divine Mother, and the one who is uh, massaging my feet in my room in Dakshineswar are same. You are the Divine Mother. That's how Sri Ramakrishna always looked upon Holy Mother Sarada Devi. Sarada Devi was always Divine Mother, none other than the Divine Mother herself for Sri Ramakrishna. One was that extreme spiritual uh, realization. Another was Sri Ramakrishna had to train her in the world. And he used to train secular things, little things, how to behave with the devotees, how to even small things like how to make a week of a lamb, solte. How to make that? Sri Ramakrishna used to teach Holy Mother as uh, many things of uh, what is important in this life. And also, of course, um, spiritual training also, because we consider Holy Mother as, though she is the Divine Mother herself, but looking from the worldly um, point of view, Holy Mother was the first disciple, as it were, of Sri Ramakrishna. So, how was Holy Mother's thing? Sri, Sri Ramakrishna, when he was asked, he said, my very devotion to God would take wings if her feelings um, are even slightly hurt. So that was the respect that he gave to Holy Mother. Never he hurt him by any word. That was how he trained because she was Divine Mother. And his respect for Holy Mother was so great. He used to say respectfully to me, whereas in general you say tui for the younger person. So that was his respect. One day someone had come, uh, Holy Mother came in Sri Ramakrishna's room and while she, she was, Sri Ramakrishna was uh, at closed eyes, didn't notice who had come. And when that person was leaving Sri Ramakrishna knew without opening eyes and he said, please go, close the door and he said, tui in that. Then Holy Mother said, yes, okay, I'll do that. Oh, you are, it is you that you have come. I so please forgive me for the word I used. You, I should have told you the respectfully you, not the, not the uh, other, other word for you that we generally use for the minors. But uh, I should have told you respectfully. Sri Ramakrishna went to Holy Mother's room to just ask for forgiveness, for pardon. That please don't mind for my saying that. I told you that I treated you, I used the word used for minors because I didn't know it for you. Such was his respect for Holy Mother. He knew Holy Mother was Divine Mother herself and she treated that way always. Uh, you know that when uh, Swami Adbhutananda Ji was making, was, was doing meditation in Dakshineshwar and uh, Sri Ramakrishna sometimes used to fan him when he used to sweat and so that he prolongs his meditation. One day he was meditating in Panjavati, Sri Ramakrishna went there and called Latu. Latu Maharaj opened to eyes and said, you know on whom you are meditating, that being is making dough for to make the rotis, to make the bread, go and help her to Holy Mother. He was meditating on God and he said, on whom you are meditating is making chapatis, go and help her. So like that was Sri Ramakrishna's view about the Holy Mother. He, she was God herself in the human form. And that is very interesting, there is the Falaharini Kali Puja um, that uh, in 5th June 1872, that was the day, this year today is 29th of May uh, 2022, Falaharini Kali Puja, this very lunar date was the new moon day on this month, was uh, on um, 5th June 1872. And it was the auspicious day of uh, Kali Puja, it's called Falaharini Kali Puja, where uh, a form of Dasha Mahavidya, Divine Mother in ten forms are called Dasha Mahavidya. One of those forms is Kali, Kali, Kali Tara, Shodasi, Bhuvaneswari, all there are ten forms of the Divine Mother. So one of the forms is Shodasi. Shodasi, young girl of 16 years, that is the um, Divine Mother is worshipped that way. Like Dhumavati, Vagala, Matangi, Kamala, Chinnamasta, all are different forms of the Divine Mother. One of them is a 16 year old Divine Mother with all beauty and glory. That is Sodasi. The Sodasi is worshipped on this Falaharani Kali Puja day. 
Bodhi Mother was uh, like 18 years of age. One who is worshipped doesn't need to be Shodashi, but Divine Mother is Shodashi. Any, any uh, person can be worshipped on that day. So, Sri Ramakrishna was ready to worship the Divine Mother herself. And he asked Holy Mother to come and watch the worship. Um, and the worship began. It was like after 9 p.m. at night, on the second quarter of the night. And all arrangements were made. Hida helped to make the arrangements and the billow leaves were brought and the asana was prepared. All articles, everything was ready. Sri Ramakrishna started worship with pre preliminary worship to um, worship the Divine Mother, Sodasi. And there was an asana made where Sodasi's presence would be felt. Mother was sitting there like that. As we, we might have seen when we offer some food, you get some asana that the deity will come and sit in the asana and will whatever food is done on the celebration we do that. So that, that's how the asana was decorated, asana was there. And Holy Mother was saying Sri Ramakrishna was doing preliminary in a very high spiritual mood. And they were almost in ecstatic mood. And uh, after some of the preliminary was gone, Holy Mother, Sri Ramakrishna said to Holy Mother, go and sit on that asana which is meant for Devi. Holy Mother, without protesting, went in a trance. She was in a trance. Such a wonderful effect was made by Sri Ramakrishna Puja. She went and sat there. And Sri Ramakrishna started worshipping. She first uh, said the prayer, O Divine Mother, O Tripura Sundari, the Surasi also called Tripura Sundari. O Tripura Sundari, please open the door of perfection. Please purify her body and mind and manifest in her and do good to all. So he invoked Tripura Sundari, the one who does good to all in the body of Holy Mother, so that her mind is purified and motherhood of uh, the Holy Mother starts there. So it was not only empowering Holy Mother as the divine being which she was, but it was also more than that. What was more? Sri Ramakrishna worshipped, they went into Samadhi after some time, after offering flowers and all that, and Sri Ramakrishna offered all the all the fruits of his sadhana at the feet of Holy Mother. And also offered his own rosary which is to do Mala Japam. He offered that also. It culminated Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual sadhana, 1872. All that he went through for like 14 years he was doing very tremendous spiritual sadhana of all sorts, Tantra, Vaishnava Tantra, and the Advaita, and, the, and the Vaishnavism, um, and Islam, Christianity, all sadhana that he did, all were, the fruits of all sadhana were offered at the feet of Holy Mother, uh, as the Tripura who was sitting there as the Sodasi. Not only that, Sri Ramakrishna offered himself total surrender to the Divine Mother in the form of Holy Mother. And Sri Ramakrishna bowed down to her, made pranam at her, at, his, at her feet, because it was the Divine Mother that Sri Ramakrishna knew. It was not just empowering Holy Mother and proclaiming that she is Divine, but offering completely to the Divine Mother in the form of Holy Mother, making that Holy Mother and Mother Kali same that he said was not just for word, just to pacify her and glorify her. It was what Sri Ramakrishna felt. Sri Ramakrishna, one thing was there. His words and acts were never different. Mon muk ad, we say, mind and the words, same. Whatever he thought in the mind, he spoke that. Whatever he spoke, that he thought. So when he said, the Divine Mother in the temple and the one who is massaging my feet are one, he meant that. So that was the day of Falaharini Kali Puja, that we have this auspicious day, that today we are on this very auspicious day of weather, when Holy Mother and Sri Ramakrishna became the worshipper and worship became one in meditation, that's how it is described when they were doing puja. Holy Mother, after that, <coughs> lived in Dakshineshwar for about uh, one year. What happened when uh, Holy Mother was <coughs> sharing the room with Sri Ramakrishna? And um, Sri Ramakrishna used to go into Samadhi always. At night he used to go into Samadhi. As if he is dead, Holy Mother could not know that he is in Samadhi. And he called many persons at dead of night to see what happened to Sri Ramakrishna now. Perhaps he, he left his body, what happened? They found, no, no, it was just Samadhi. And sleepless night, very anxious, it was often repeated. 
And Sri Ramakrishna saw it's very difficult for her to um, very anxious. She's, she's spending sleepless nights, she said, from now on you will sleep in Nahabad, um, where Sri Ramakrishna's mother also, also stayed. Uh, so that was the room given, that Nahabad is still called um, Holy Mother's room, is their small room. If you go and see the Chineswar, very tiny room, it's not called a room, it's a small closed space where she spent so many years, as long as Sri Ramakrishna was there, um, like 12 years, she stayed there, um, that Nahabad. As it is said, Sita's life was all Rama. Um, Janaki ji vana Rama naam, that which we chant often. Similarly, uh, Holy Mother's life was Sri Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna gata prana, that's how we chant. Her whole life force was Sri Ramakrishna. She was one with Sri Ramakrishna. When we say Ramakrishna Sarada, we don't see these two persons as two different entities. One being appearing as two and performing the same person is the great Leela of Divine that appeared and where um, in other Leelas, in the Rama Leela, Krishna Leela, it was being read in the Buddha Leela, all was uh, the Avatara had the greater role to play and um, Avatara deluged the world with the spirituality and uh, they had their wife, their Shakti, they had uh, like a side role that they played, great exalted life of Sita, wonderful devotional life of Radha or um, great life of um, Vishnu Priya, um, all are great but the um, Avatara was overpowering. In Sri Ramakrishna Avatara it's a little different. Here Sri Ramakrishna no doubt has uh, deluged the world with spirituality but with the help of Holy Mother. He empowered women, Holy Mother, as her equal in every right. Even in imparting the spiritual knowledge, the Holy Mother was given equal right as Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna, when um, Sri Ramakrishna asked Holy Mother to give initiation, to give spiritual ministration, and he said, give initiation to uh, Swami Trivunathadananda, Sarada Prasanna. And uh, Sri Ramakrishna himself told, give him initiation, give him initiation. So perhaps he didn't give that time because she later said after Sri Ramakrishna was passing away, she gave initiation to the Jogin Maharaj and says he was my first initiate. I initiated him because that also Sri Ramakrishna told him in vision, in dream. And that's why she gave. So he said, help them spiritually. Help, you have to help world. So um, Holy Mother said, what can I do? I am illiterate, I am nothing, I am woman. How can I help? Sri Ramakrishna said, what I have done, you will do more than what I have done. Sri Ramakrishna's words came. And Holy Mother literally did lot more. For 34 years after Sri Ramakrishna passing away, she did that work. By her prayer is the Ramakrishna order established. Ramakrishna order was established by Swami Vivekananda had a wish and it was uh, the direction of Sri Ramakrishna himself. But what was the force behind that? Was Holy Mother's prayer. That's how we find the Ramakrishna mission. Just it has 125 years. The Ramakrishna mission completed on 1st of May, 1st of this month, um, 125 years. Um, Ramakrishna Math was started by Sri Ramakrishna himself. By he ordained a few of his disciples by offering, uh, by giving, handing over them the ochre robes, symbolic, uh, making them sannyasin. But um, the prayer behind the finding of the Birul Math and permanent award for uh, for the disciples Sri Ramakrishna it was Holy Mother's prayer. And how many people were spiritually um, helped by Holy Mother? Numerous. We, that includes very common porter at the railway station, very simple person, to a very elevated person like the district magistrate of, uh, of our Bakura district. Um, uh, and uh, also some great uh, movie directors, Sohrab Modi. Like that all were the disciples of Holy Mother. So there was no distinction. So she, she initiated everyone who came to him and they, they, she changed the life of all those by her spiritual power. So Sri Ramakrishna had to um, move to um, Shampukur uh, because he got throat uh, infection. And now how to make food for him, special food. Uh, so 
they request people's suggestion, bring Holy Mother there. There was no separate room for Holy Mother to stay. Where will she stay? Sri Ramakrishna had always uh, cared. There was a small, tiny room at the roof, just close to roof, when you enter Sri roof. And Holy Mother was given that room, where she would cook for Sri Ramakrishna, she would rest there, she would never come down and when the people are around, but when everybody went, she would come and bring food and at time she would share with some, some other person. Like that, she stayed in that tiny room again, from Dakshineshwar's tiny room to Shampur's tiny, tiny room. If you go to Shampur, that house is now Ramakrishna Mars um, Center. You can see that. So, Holy Mother dead and then uh, she cooked there. Sri Ramakrishna was moved to Kashipur. In Kashipur, she got a little bigger room at the stair, below the staircase. And she, there she was to cook for Sri Ramakrishna and always think of Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, how was the relation? Sri Ramakrishna, is, but she would never come upstairs when people were around. One day, and um, one day Sri Ramakrishna said, can you bring, he was not able to speak because his throat was choked. Can you bring this one, she used to wear uh, this, um, some ornament in the nose, big ring in the nose. Can you bring that in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in a bag or uh, in a basket? Can you bring her upstairs? That's how he used to say. So Sri Ramakrishna always, Holy Mother always served Sri Ramakrishna with undivided attention. Always Holy Mother was uh, in Sri Ramakrishna. That's why it, it's called Ramakrishna Gata Prana. When uh, in Kashipur, Sri Ramakrishna on um, the 16th August 1886, Sri Ramakrishna went into Mahasamadhi. And uh, it was in, Holy Mother was informed, she came up and she just embraced Sri Ramakrishna and what she said, O oh, Mother Kali, where you were leaving me behind. Not Sri Ramakrishna, nothing else. How Sri Ra Holy Mother saw Sri Ramakrishna? Same Mother Kali. Each one is to say rather the Divine Mother. There was no other relationship, there was no other vision because both were in fact the incarnation of Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna once said, I see nothing within me except the Divine Mother, except Mother Kali. And Holy Mother was also that same thing and each other they saw as Divine Mother. That was their wedded life, nothing else. Always in very high spiritual mood. In after Sri Ramakrishna passing away, um, Holy Mother according to custom wanted to remove her um, bracelets and also her red border. Sri Ramakrishna appeared to, to him and why are you doing that? And he said, have I gone somewhere else? I have just passed from one room to another room. I am still living, I am still here. In subtle body, Sri Ramakrishna is there. Swami Vivekananda also said, Sri Ramakrishna has not given his subtle body. Vodhimata also said, Sri Ramakrishna lives in his subtle body. See, he, she saw, see in the vision, Sri Ramakrishna coming and telling to her, don't remove your bracelets. Um, and uh, by that, Holy Mother put on her bracelets always, though she was a Hindu Brahmin widow, very orthodox, and she didn't make the white cloth, she made the narrow red border, she tore the border red, thick border and made it narrow. She always wore with the red border, narrow red border and the bracelet to the criticism of many people in the village. Village people didn't like how a widow can live like that. Holy Mother was so strong, if you see even in the, in the worldly view. She didn't mind what the people say. She lived as was right because for him was Sri Ramakrishna had directed that. So she was never went on the words, what people will say, what they will criticize, nothing like that. Many times it happened in her life. She was so courageous and strong. Once um, one, so everyone came to Holy Mother. Whoever couldn't find other place to go, they would come to Holy Mother and they had wonderful love soured by Holy Mother as her own daughter and son. She treated everyone as her children. One lady comes, who was not of good repute, and um, and people started talking, oh, why does she come to Sri Ramakri, Holy Mother and all that. One day, the group of devotees who helped and served were the main support of Holy Mother in a group came led by the wife of Valram Basu, great devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, Rasadhar. He was very renowned and uh, she comes and says, Mother, you have to excuse me, but uh, that lady does not uh, good repute, so um, please ask her not to come. Holy Mother asked, what do you mean? Actually, if she comes, how can we go? 
We cannot go if she comes to you. Uh, we have to keep aloof away from, from you. Holy Mother, what she said, though one side was the neglected lady, was supposed to be not very good uh, character, another side was the whole group of devotees. Holy Mother said, what can I do, my child? That person has only here to come, she has nowhere else to go. If you find somewhere to go and find joy, I can do nothing for that. But that lady will come to me because she finds peace here. See the courage of Holy Mother. She was undaunted by the social customs and criticism. That was his nature. Very strong, very powerful. That was his, even in the worldly relationship as the Divine Mother. Of course, he is the Mother herself, Mahamaya herself, who in matter is scared. So the people want the thought that uh, she will be scared if we go and say it. But she was not there. And her, her this strength and courage came from her motherhood. She was mother to all. No one excluded from her motherhood. That was her power. And how was the mother's power? Um, when um, you know the story that one, she, she was bringing food for Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineswar and she was near the room of the Sri Ramakrishna, one lady suddenly comes and says, Mother, please give me. I will uh, I'll put it to keep it for Sri Ramakrishna and put it on the ground. Sri Ramakrishna was there, but uh, that lady came and uh, put it on the ground at the place where Sri Ramakrishna would eat. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting there. He didn't notice that uh, someone had brought. And Holy Mother came after that, she sat. So that lady came, put his plate of food and went away. Sri Ramakrishna even doesn't know that. And then he was eating and says, Oh, I can't eat. What happened? Who brought this? So Holy Mother said, That lady said, Mother, give me, I'll keep. Then I gave it. She said, Why did you give to that lady? You should not give. Now I cannot eat this food. She is not a very good character. So Holy Mother said, Please eat today. From next time I'll see that... Uh, it is brought. Uh, that, uh, then he said, then promise that you will not give to anyone else. You will always bring for me. What Holy Mother's reply was, anybody who asks me addressing as mother, I cannot refuse that, O Thakur. And you are, you are master of not only to me, you are master of everyone, all of us. You, are not, you belong not only to me, you belong to everyone. That I cannot do. If someone says, addresses me as mother and want to do something, ask something of me, I will, I cannot refuse that. Even after Sri Ramakrishna said, Holy Mother had that strength to refute that. Sri Ramakrishna's word was not the word of God for him, for her. And still she, here in this case, she said, no, I cannot do that. And see what happened after that? After that Sri Ramakrishna started eating. As if uh, then Swami Siddharananji describes it very nice. Australia, Swami Siddharananji had very 90 years, 94 years old, and he came here and he described the story. He says, Why? How could Sri Ramakrishna eat? That was impure food and in his way, and it was touched by someone not very holy, and how could it? So Swami Siddharananji describes his own view. He says, By the purity of Holy Mother, by her look, the food is all purified, if it was even it's impure. In our worldly views, it is like Sri Ramakrishna tasting Holy Mother and seeing that whether the motherhood is developing so much that it can refute even my request, even everything else, when she is, she is regarded and addressed as mother, nothing could hold him, hold her. So that was Sri Ramakrishna all planning that she wanted that to develop. Sister Nivedita said very nicely, she said that, Sri Ramak the Holy Mother is the last word of um, Sri, Sri Ramakrishna. Holy Mother is the final word of Sri Ramakrishna's ideal of womanhood. Sri Ramakrishna had the idea how the woman should be, what should be her character, behavior, what should be her spirituality, what should be her dealing in the world, how much she would be loving to all. Sri Ramakrishna had the idea. Its ultimate perfection is Holy Mother. What the woman should be? She should be like Holy Mother. That's what Sri Ramakrishna's plan. It was the final word of womanhood, um, uh, was uh, the ideal of womanhood according to Sri Ramakrishna is Holy Mother. Nibhita does it very nicely. And also she says another, Holy Mother is the pot where Sri Ramakrishna has put all his love for the world. So much of love for the world. He is full with love for the world. He wanted to just remove all the suffering as Buddha had. 
Sri Ramakrishna has nothing less than that. All this incarnation of so much love for the world. Now, where to put that love? He's concluding his life in his 50 years of time. Where to put that love had to continue. Where that love should go? And Sri Ramakrishna poured all his love in Holy Mother. Holy Mother was such a huge container. She contained all and distributed the 34 years after Sri Ramakrishna passing away. What he, what she distributed? It was Sri Ramakrishna's unconditional love that flowed through Holy Mother. And she was that's what maybe the beautiful way of expression. She was the part to hold the unconditional love for the whole world, Sri Ramakrishna's unconditional love for the whole world. Another incident where Holy Mother was undaunted and even uh, she didn't uh, listen to Sri Ramakrishna was um, young boys used to come to Sri Ramakrishna to practice meditation and spirituality. And Sri Ramakrishna made the rules how much, how much they should meditate, when they should wake up, how much they should eat. And uh, he, little at night, Sri Ramakrishna was, um, he, was say, he used to say, at lunch you eat lot, barutthasa, barutthasa is the word. Like, like in, when you put uh, gunpowder in a gun, you press it as much as it can go. That's called barutthasa. You eat as much as you can. But at night be frugal, eat very little because you have to meditate. So like that Sri Ramakrishna instruction was. And uh, he said, no more than two breaks to that flat bread that you eat chapati. And uh, it was seen that young men, they are hungry, no? And then uh, it was seen that Holy Mother is giving some more, four or five. And this Sri Ramakrishna took her to task. And I said to give two rotis and you are giving more than that to this young person, Babu Ram, is eating more. What is that? Holy Mother said, don't worry for them. I will take their care. See the boldness of Holy Mother for disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. And that was also made Sri Ramakrishna very happy. Sri Ramakrishna was not angry at all. Sri Ramakrishna was pleased to hear that Holy Mother is taking care of the disciples, of the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna. All she wanted that, he wanted that to manifest in Holy Mother. Then Holy Mother after Sri Ramakrishna passed away, uh, didn't want to leave this life in the world. She was alone. Sri Ramakrishna was all in all. She used to listen, she used to, listen to him, guidance, guide, and she was now nothing. So um, she said, she thought of um, giving up the body in Samadhi. But uh, Sri Ramakrishna knew that if there is no something Maya is there, so Mahamaya will also not stay. Mahamaya also needs Maya to stay in this world. If our all Maya is gone, we will not retain this body. Only Jivan Mukti can be there, but still there will be a trace of Maya in Jivan Mukti. Trace of ego will be there. When ego and Maya are totally gone, no life continues. So people are all afraid, Holy Mother will, uh, will give up her body in Samadhi. Then Sri Ramakrishna made a plan. One small girl was uh, crawling, her own relative, her brother's um, son, the brother had died. And uh, the daughter was, um, and her mother was crazy. And that lady was crawling. And Sri Ramakrishna appeared before the Holy Mother and says, Get hold of that, take care of that girl. She was just crawling. And that was the Maya's Rupa so that Sri Ramakrishna made, taking care. Now the Holy Mother started loving that girl and so much that the Maya came. Now Maya held on to Holy Mother, a trick by Sri Ramakrishna that Holy Mother stayed. So that was the relationship between Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother, always together. Death may take one body, doesn't matter, this Mahasamadhi and, and becoming invisible, that may be there, but they were always together. Swami uh, Bhutasanandji very nicely describes uh, in, uh, about Holy Mother. He says, Holy Mother and Sri Ramakrishna are not two beings, they are one. So, when we meditate on Holy Mother, Sri Ramakrishna is pleased. When we do pranam to Holy Mother, this holy pranam to Holy Mother goes to Sri Ramakrishna. 
Because Holy Mother and Sri Ramakrishna are same. There is no distinction. Sometimes we say, oh, why is in Sarudama they put Holy Mother's picture in the middle? Why in Ramakrishna mission they put Sri Ramakrishna picture? Doesn't make any difference at all. In fact, we say, Thakur, Ma and Swami, Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother and Swami Vivekananda, they are three in one and one in three. When we worship only Swami Vivekananda, it's worshiping Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother. No difference. Holy Mother is all Sri Ramakrishna only. When we do, and the, um, Sri, Ram, um, that, uh, um, Sri Ramakrishna became Kalpataru on 1st uh, January 1886. Now he gave spiritual, um, spiritual elevation to many of the devotees, then more than that they deserve. Swami Bhute Sarandha writes very nicely, Sri Ramakrishna became Kalpataru one day, but Holy Mother was Kalpataru every day. Every day anybody came, she would give them spiritual power, spiritual um, motivation and she was like Kalpataru. But when Holy Mother is Kalpataru, Sri Ramakrishna cannot, live, cannot stand behind. It is Sri Ramakrishna's power that is coming through the Holy Mother. When we respect Holy Mother, we are respecting Sri Ramakrishna. When we Holy Mother is granting us power, spiritual power is Sri Ramakrishna's power that is coming. The two are, two are not separate. And uh, Swami, um, again to quote Swami Sridharanandaji, Ji, uh, he once uh, said about Virajananda Ji, Virajananda Ji was always a little, uh, that he lived during Sri Ramakrishna was there, but he was always said, oh, I didn't see Sri Ramakrishna. He, was, he used to live in Kolkata and he was not a grown up person, but still there could be a chance that he could have seen Sri Ramakrishna. So that was always he used to feel, oh, I couldn't see Sri Ramakrishna, I couldn't see Sri Ramakrishna. One day he wanted to say, Holy Mother, and say, Mother, I have this thing always um, in my mind. What was my bad luck that I couldn't see Sri Ramakrishna? Holy Mother said, what? You have not seen Sri Ramakrishna? See, and he see, opened her veil, and he saw Sri Ramakrishna there. That Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother are not separate. They both knew how many times Sri Holy Mother showed that I, I am one with Sri Ramakrishna. That's what Holy Mother, Sarada Devi and Sri Ramakrishna are two personalities, but one being literally in every way. So Swami Sarada Nandji um, wrote a beautiful verse that we call as the Pranam Mantra of Ma Sarada. And he says, Yathagne Dahika Shakti Ramakrishne Stitahiya. Ah, so how is the relationship? Like the fire and its power to burn. And Holy Mother is like the power in the fire. And she remains in the fire like its own power. That is their relationship, inseparable. When there is fire, power to burn, there has to be fire. And when there is fire, it has to be power to burn. They are inseparable. So like that, Holy Mother always in Sri Ramakrishna likes fire's power to burn and the fire together are always there. And she is what? Sarva Vidya Swarupam. She is the embodiment of all knowledge. What are all knowledge? Knowledge in the Vedas, they describe Vedanta, describe knowledge are two types. That um, this is a... Vidya and Paravidya. Hmm? And the Vidya is all knowledge of that we have uh, here in the world. Hmm? The, the language and the um, and science and everything that the um, like arts, that all is the knowledge. And there is another called vid Paravidya, the ultimate knowledge, knowledge of Brahman. So that knowledge and this knowledge. So Holy Mother represents all knowledge. Didn't Sri Ramakrishna himself say, Holy Mother is um, Saraswati, he has come to impart knowledge. So that was Sri Ramakrishna's observation and that he often used to say to his devotees how the Holy Mother is. Once Hridaya was, uh, um, was like, um, somehow he was unkind to Holy Mother, in this story also we heard. And um, Sri Ramakrishna said he got to know about that. Holy Mother is little, um, annoyed with Hridaya, he said something and he called Hridaya and said, Either if you say something unkind to me, um, and uh, what, if, what is inside this, this power inside it may forgive you, may do nothing. But if you do something to her, the power within her is so strong, then if that becomes annoyed or upset, even Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara cannot protect you. You understand who Holy Mother is. That's how the relationship between Holy Mother and 
for the man Sri Ramakrishna was. He often used to say about who Holy Mother is. Swami Vivekananda says to other brother disciples, to Swami Shivananda, he has written, Brother, you don't know who Holy Mother really is. And he says, I also cannot fully know who Holy Mother is. Only Sri Ramakrishna could know who Holy Mother is because he knows God fully. Who knows God that only person can know Holy Mother. That was the Holy Mother's that thing. So today, uh, on this uh, Holy Day, on the auspicious day of uh, Kalaharani Kali Puja, we bow down to Holy Mother and Sri Ramakrishna as the great spiritual power that is always with us. Guiding, protecting, taking care, they are always with us. We have to have that faith, that trust in Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother and Swami Vivekananda and feel free that we are taken care of. What we do fear, one person who I asked, are you afraid in certain situations of your life? And uh, in fact, in fact, he was uh, almost uh, one day before his death. And I asked, are you afraid of death? Uh, he said, why Swamiji? I have Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother. Why should I be afraid? See the power and the strength that Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother give. Only we have to have that faith and trust that they are with me. Didn't Holy Mother herself say, if we have any problem in life, any time, in any stage of life, just say to yourself, I have a mother. And mother is always protecting, taking care, guiding. She's, she's taking us through various ways. Some seem to be very difficult paths, sometimes it's easy and joyful path, but it is she who is guiding us in this path, in this world. And it is up for our good that she is taking either through difficult paths or through easy path. But it is she who is taking us, holding our hand. May we realize that it is she who is guiding us in our life and she is always holding our hand. May we have that faith and be free from all worries, anxieties, fear and anything. Life is short, as Swami Vivekananda said, the, the body will go, but Holy Mother will always be there, whether in the body or outside the body. Always she will be holding our hand and taking us to the right path and to the ultimate goal. With the Pranam Mantra, I close to this, and this little thought about Holy Mother. <clears throat> Jananim Saradam Devim Ram Krishnam Jagad Gurum Padapadme Tayo Shritva Pranamami Muhur